The U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals at St. Louis has awarded $164,000 to the National Farmers Organization to cover its costs in appealing a decision which reversed a lower federal court at Kansas City. This has come to be known as the dairy antitrust case we're talking about. It started about a decade ago when two co-ops sued the NFO. Then later, national farmers countersued under the antitrust laws. We have Devon Woodland here today. He's president of National Farmers Organization. Devon, how do you assess this St. Louis decision? The decision is precedent-setting in several ways. First of all, the award that we have just received was made from the appeals court prior to the final judgment in the case, which is highly unusual. Second, it's the highest single award that this court has ever granted on an appeal. Another point I think that's important is it's the first time this court has awarded to the victorious party in an antitrust case reimbursement of actual expenses for items other than those included as costs of appeal by the statute. So there has been three very important uh, issues established here. And this St. Louis decision talks merely of the expenses on the appeal. And where does it go from here? It goes now back to Kansas City. And going back there to Kansas City will determine the amount of uh, reimbursement that NFO is entitled to. Uh, we have spent some $11 million out of the pocket uh, cash, and this does not include any damages that are yet to be assessed by the judge, which may include time lost by executive people, by uh, markets lost, by uh, dues not collected, by membership uh, numbers uh, not uh, enrolling in the program. So there's uh, many, many damages that are yet to be assessed by the uh, Kansas City Court in addition to the monies spent uh, for legal fees. As the NFO convention was ending at Louisville, we were able to talk with Randy and Julie Peterson of Montevideo, Minnesota. They were mentioned by executive assistant Ed Graff at the speaker's platform because Randy is one of the youngest county NFO presidents, a new member elected only a week before the convention. I feel that agriculture today is in a pathetic state and that uh, I know it's been a fight for us for the last quite a few years just trying to hang on to what we've got and what we've earned for ourselves. If we have any hope of hanging on to our farming operation and being able to operate in the future, we need more people in, in the NFO and organizations of this kind to tell the people of this nation that, that hey, we have got a right to get paid for what we do, just like you've got a right to be paid for your hourly wage for working in a factory, for working in a grocery store, for doing whatever you might do. The farmer is no different from, from you. We have a right to be paid for the labors and the investment and the, the time that we spend. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask Julie now just to describe of the kind of farm operation you have and the sort of family responsibilities. How many youngsters do you have? Okay, we have three small children ranging in ages from two and a half to seven. We have about, oh, between 500 and 570 hogs on the farm at all times. We farm about 320 acres. I noticed that Ed Graff, he said that even as busy as your family is, that you'll find time to go and approach other young people, huh? Yes, that's correct. Was your conception of the NFO accurate before you joined and became county president? No, I guess I really had no idea of what this organization was all about. I joined NFO uh, strictly as a marketing outlet for my hogs here last January. Was your expectation as a marketing outlet or a vehicle for your hog production, uh, did that meet your expectations, the NFO? I would have to say it exceeded my expectations because I've been, I've been uh, raising a good quality type hog and I have had no, no outlet before that paid me for the type of hogs I raised. I have come as close to with, as within a dollar basis of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange dealing through the NFO organization and, and historically our basis in, in the Montevideo area has always been about 4 to $5 off Chicago. 
is that I'm very pleased at the job that our Collection Point people do and the NFO organization in general has done for us. So I'll say Rand, uh, Randy and Julie Peterson, welcome aboard to the National Farmers Organization and all of the uh, other young farmers and ranchers in the United States. One of the most valuable experiences the delegates bring home from a convention of national farmers is the knowledge gained from workshop discussions of bargaining. In the hog division, Merle Sunken explained at Louisville the improved terms of NFO supply contracts by comparing the 1975 contract and the 1982 contract with the same packer. The base price shall be the top of the bulk range one to three mid-station quote in Interior, Iowa, as quoted at, by the USDA at 10.45 a.m., plus 80 cents per hundredweight delivered to the respective plants. Hogs delivered under this contract grade USDA ones and twos and threes, but in no event may any day's shipment contain more than 25% USDA number three hogs. Now the one that what I want you to remember out of this ladies and gentlemen is we had the practical top of a market plus 80 cents per hundred weight delivered to that plant. And then Merle Sunken noted the improvements in the 1982 contract signed recently with that same packer. And it reads like this, the live base price at the collection point uh, for butcher hogs shall be the East Missouri mid-session practical top of the 1 to 2s, 210, 240 pounds with weight with up to $1 per hundred weight for quality. Packer do be to pay NFO Incorporated Corning, Iowa, 40 cents per hundred weight for services uh, rendered, i.e. trucking arrangements and scheduling. Freight from the NFO collection points shall be paid by the packing plant. We use the same top market, plus we put a buck on it for quality, plus we put 40 cents on it for services, plus we made the packer pay the entire amount of trucking. One of the highlighted news items from the convention was an announcement by the hog division of a new forward contract with the smaller producers in NFO. In the past, all the contracts we've been using has either called for a half contract, which is 15,000 pounds, or a full contract, which calls for approximately 30,000 pounds of live hogs. A lot of producers don't have that many hogs to go with at one time, so we've been able to develop a new program where we can sell 35 head of hogs, or approximately 7,500 pounds at a time, and giving all producers an opportunity to lock in a price and a profit for the hog that they're moving away from their farm. Merle Sunken at the NFO National Convention at Louisville. I'm interviewing Kalo Heineman, a Kansas farmer, livestock man, and who's also a veterinarian. He is the first farmer appointed to the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. He's a Reagan appointee to the CFTC. When we talked on the phone several weeks ago, uh, we were talking about forward contracts, and the NFO has worked very hard to develop them. That's true. Back, you know, for 30 years, I marketed most of my cattle. I was a stalker operator primarily, and I marketed most of my feeder cattle to uh, feedlot operators by way of a forward contract. And that's not, uh, that's nothing new at all. You know, over the range states, that's the way they've, the mountain ranchers have sold their calves for a long time, forward contracts. Uh, you think it's uh, a pretty good tool? Well, it was a very good risk management tool for me. It put predictability into my operation. It let me run more cattle because it made my banker happy. You know, I... You, know, you never go broke hedging in a profit, and that's what I was doing. I was selling those cattle at a profit. Thank you very much. I've been talking with Kalo Heineman, the first farmer appointed to the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. This is a grain seminar that National Farmers has been having on this Wednesday date during the National Convention. I have here Ray Jurgison, who is Director of Operations, and Jack Lawson, who has a great deal to do with NFO grain operations in the northwest part of the United States. One question you were getting, gentlemen, when you discussed the NFO's moves to get the farmer-held grain reserve going through national farmers was a question that had to do with the release mechanism. One questioner after another would say, well, what if this release mechanism causes everybody to come in in a glut? 
How did you answer that? I'll turn to Jack Lawson first. Well, essentially, Phil, the reason we need to unite the reserve behind the National Reserve grain block is so that when the release levels are announced, our pre-negotiated contracts will allow that grain to flow into the marketplace in an even flow over a long period of time to prevent that glut. Now, there are going to be um, other farmers, of course, that are going to be scrambling for the market. But in the meantime, our, market, our grain will move to market uh, in an orderly fashion. Because you have pre-negotiated contracts. Yes. Uh, the, the trade, of course, uh, needs grain. They need grain all the time. And they need all the grain that they need on a particular day at a particular place. And, and that's what they want. And they're willing to bid for that. Now, I'm going to turn to Ray Jurgison, who is director of operations for grain for National Farmers. A lot of people are probably wondering, is National Farmers making any headway now in getting gr this grain uh, through NFO? Yes, the fact that sign-up has been phenomenal, and we know on first and second contact that we'll run somewhere around 40 percent, will enroll in the program, that's members and non-members alike. We don't divulge in any one day what we currently have in reserve because that's part of the bargaining strength you hope to build, but the response has been just short of overwhelming, so we're satisfied that, yes, we're going forward on it. I'm talking with a consultant on transportation and agricultural matters. His name is Jim Loth, L-A-U-T-H, who was deputy director of transportation for the USDA. He now is a partner in the firm of Schrader and Loth, associates who are consultants in transporting grain. What would you advise grain producers to do about transportation? Well, I'm not sure that there's a whole lot that the specific individual grain producer can do about transportation. What I think is needed is an organization like NFO, uh, who does arrange for shipping, for NFO to, to, to do a good job in managing its transportation for its farmer members. And those members will benefit from, from a well-managed transportation uh, organization. And that is what we're trying to do with NFO is to increase their efficiency in, in transportation. I've been talking with Jim Loth, who is a partner in the firm Schrader and Loth Associates, who are consultants in transportation for agriculture. He's a former deputy director of transportation for the Department of Agriculture. I'm talking now with Devon Woodland. He's going to tell about a resolution that's just been adopted at this convention of the NFO at Louisville, Kentucky. What is the resolution? Be it resolved that NFO opposes the 50 cents per hundredweight dairy assessment on milk on legal and constitutional grounds and will immediately file a lawsuit against the government to declare the law invalid and for a refund of any sums collected under that act. I know dairy farmers very much oppose that tax, which the NFO is going to start this lawsuit against. Why do dairy farmers oppose it? We think it will not have the desired effect uh, dairymen will increase their herds to cover the costs to pay the operating expenses on that farm, and hence the volume of milk will increase and still decrease under this program. Way last spring, didn't the NFO make a proposal for the USDA which actually would reduce production? We met with the USDA in Kansas City at the Dairy Symposium, and there we recommended to them that we initiate a cull cow program, reducing 10% of the producing cows from the herds. Uh, we believe that uh, was good then, we believe it is good now, and certainly ought to be uh, considered as uh, a way to accomplish the desired effect. Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization, telling about a resolution just adopted at the National Convention of NFO to file a suit to invalidate the dairy tax. I'm Phil Allen reporting from Louisville.